In my last video I said I wanted to do some runecrafting and I actually looked into some achievement diaries and I didn't know the experience from them was actually this good. I thought it would be like 10,000 experience lamps all the way to elite or something like that, maybe maximum like a 50k or something. But if you complete the easy, medium, hard and elite diaries of just the wilderness, you get a total of 447,000 experience and of course that on runecrafting would be basically an entire level as well as getting some achievement diaries done overall is very good. I have basically not done any, I think I've only done like easy tier 1 and that's pretty much it. I might have done something else as well but uh, I'm going to be doing some achievement diaries to start off the video. Hope you guys will enjoy it, like the video if you like it and let's get into it. I'm actually working on the last two steps for the elite wilderness uh, diary and I just got status plate legs. Not sure if these are useful at all, what uh, is their value? Only 400k, so not that interesting I guess, but uh, basically the first revenants I ever killed because uh, it says I just have to kill one of each and I had basically killed none, so statues plate legs on basically one of the first kills. I had to wait like 5 hours for a warband, but that is the uh, last task completed on the elite wilderness diaries. And I do think actually that the wilderness ones are the ones that give me most experience out of all the different diaries. Maybe there's one or two that gives uh, a bit more, but uh, when I look through the rewards for them, some of them are like I expected, like some experience lamps that give 10,000 experience and that's it. But the wilderness one was really good and was like 400 or more than 400,000 experience for doing all of them. So now I'm going to claim the experience and the rewards for all the diaries. And by the way, I'm not going to put it on runecrafting. Runecrafting is just tedious and slow but construction is even worse on an iron man getting all the planks is just insane so i'm going to put it on construction so this is all the teleports that you get and of course if you have it equipped you can just uh, do this and teleport to edgeville right away and it is super good for runecrafting this is mainly why i wanted to get it but also the agility course teleport is pretty good because can i actually remove this oh i can't okay so i have to accept the uh, teleport every time this is actually pretty good because uh, normally i would have to run quite a lot to get to this uh, bloodwood tree but now instead i just uh, teleport with a sword and it's right here as well as the agility course it's kind of annoying to get to if you're like in priftenus or something you have to go through a lot of uh, areas to be able to get there so now i can just quickly teleport there and of course we have a lot of experience lamps here as well. The first ones are just 10k construction experience. But then after that it's going to be 77k for the higher tier ones. 40k for another one. Another one that is 40k. And I think there's going to be some that are like 95, yeah, 95,000 construction experience. And just from these I am getting overall 440,000 experience. And I did hit uh, 88, almost 89. As I'm going to go for 99 construction, I think it's a good thing to do two things. Uh, first, claim the rewards I had in my kingdom, which I had not collected for four years by the way, but I didn't have that much money in the coffer, but I'm going to put more in. But at least I got 2.4k mahogany logs, and I think I have like 2,000 in the bank already. But the second thing I have to do is I have to make the plank maker in the invention guild. And I think I'm just going to put in like 5 mil or something. And then I have enough money here for probably as much as I need. And then I should just remove all of this and put all of it on Mahogany. And I still have some, so I guess I can put it on Teak as well. No, wait. Oh, I can't have both. Okay, so I'll just take like farm or something, I guess. Maybe herbs is still the best. But anyways, I'm going to make the plank maker as well in my invention guild. And so meanwhile doing runecrafting, I can get planks made casually. Skilling is good and all, but I actually want to try to get a Raksha kill in this video. I know that uh, a lot of people have said that this is a pretty hard boss to get into and duo is easier than solo, but I do want to try to get a solo in this video done. Had to complete a mini quest that took like 2 minutes to do, so uh, let's see what we can get done in this video. As I am an Iron Man, I have to actually get some red chinchompas and make 100 mechanized chinchompas, should be enough for quite a while. I'm only going to bring probably like 10 per kill or kill attempt, because you need to kill some anima pools and they are like stacks of 5 or 6 or something enemies technically in a pile so you have to kill them really fast and i don't really have the laceration boots that make it possible to kill them with bladed dive so mechanized chinchompas it is 
Even though I definitely will be spam eating most likely on the first attempts that I do, I'm still going to bring a Ripper Demon because uh, I just don't want to bring a pack yak full of food that I'm probably not going to even use because I'm just going to get one shot to failing a mechanic anyways probably. But uh, this is my inventory and I think the Dragon Defender is a bit out of place because I just don't really have any good shields. Uh, I would like to do a Rise of the Six maybe sometime for those shields, but I don't really know what else I can use. I've uh, disassembled my armadillo buckler and all that, but uh, I guess this will do for a resonance at least. So let's talk about Raksha, the Shadow Colossus. It is a very hard boss to learn. I would say that if you're not familiar with the uh, Soul Split flicking or Prayer flicking in general, you are going to struggle with this boss a lot. You need basically to be good at everything. You need to be good at prey flicking, you need to have good DPS, you need to be able to do things meanwhile also doing other things. You need to be able to basically soul split flick, prayer flick and also do strategies at a very good pace as well as being able to have good DPS to not get the bad phases or have the boss get way too much energy. So now by the way uh, you can see in the background I am killing the pools at the wrong time but I am killing the pools with a mechanized chinchompa as you can see you throw the chinchompa in the middle and it kills basically all the pools but uh, if you don't do it correctly really well the boss will get really high energy and he will just uh, destroy you. So getting the timing for that down was really difficult and these are just some highlights of my first 25 attempts. And the last phase was also very hard to get used to because you have to stay in melee range with the boss basically the whole time because uh, otherwise he will stun you and you have to run around and pick up these anima things to do more damage so now I get stunned as you can see and then the pool lands in this area and I just get screwed with position and I get one shot. So after doing like 20 to 25 tries and getting to the last phase probably like 3 times in total, I think I have to be using the Essence of Finality if I want to have a chance. The Dark Bow damage is just way too strong and the accuracy. And then I am trying to use the Vampirism Aura to just last longer with a Ripper Demon. But I'm not sure exactly what to go with. I think still the Reckless is probably the best because if you just Zerg the boss down, it is going to be way easier to kill it. As a beginner, of course, if you're very good at the boss, then you know what to do. You can play with anything. But for me, I think I have to use the Essence of Finality, even though it is pretty expensive and hard to recharge for an Iron Man. And then on top of that, Reckless or maybe Vampirism Aura. I think Sharpshooter is a bit weird if you have Essence of Finality. But um, yeah, I'm still going to try to do in practice mode. I tried a few without practice mode and I just uh, died. And then you just lose 1.5 million instead of uh, getting a free death. I had a few attempts like this where I got to the last phase, but then I just screwed up the tail swipe in some way and you just basically get one shot at that point. So you can't actually stand on this side because it will still hit you. You have to go straight backwards. I didn't know that, but uh, lesson learned, I suppose. No. Oh, come on. But not very long after that depressing death in the end of the fight, I was actually live streaming these few last attempts on Twitch to try out the quality for my actual YouTube live streams that will happen the 23rd of August and so on, or so forth. But after that, I actually did manage to get a very slow kill, but I did get a kill in practice mode. And uh, it was very nice to actually see Raksha die, even though it was of course not a clean kill by any means, it was still very nice to see that it was possible for me to get a kill and uh, basically just super motivated me to keep trying with this boss. So with that done, I do of course want to do a normal kill, but I have to get some more Bacriminal Bolts and the uh, Bacriminal Bolts I have a lot of, but I don't have rubies to put the tips on. So I'm just going to be mining some of these precious gem rocks. They only give emeralds, diamonds and rubies, which is basically all the good at Bacriminal Bolts. So it's very nice to mine these precious gem rocks. And I am also going to use a Ring of Death for the normal sessions because I have a lot of onyxes in the bank and I don't have much money. I only 1 million. If I die, it's like 1.6 million in death cost. 
so I'm going to be uh, trying as much as I can with the Ring of Death. If I would run out of charges before I get a kill, which I don't think is going to happen, then I'm going to stop, but uh, hopefully we can get a kill in the normal session. <sighs> oh. Okay. Nine minutes and 40 seconds for uh, 107 onyx dust. Let me uh, turn off the music for a second. It's very good to have uh, in-game sounds on for Raksha. But uh, yeah, that is an entire onyx basically. And uh, I have used probably two whole onyxes to get this kill. And of course it's a very slow kill. But uh, yeah, can't really be uh, too sad about that. Now I can use the boss portal. If you guys have ever killed Raksha before, you're going to laugh right now. Actually, I didn't know uh, that in the last phase, you have to DPS the shield. Yeah, I was wondering why I never got any of these Shattered Anima or Shadow Anima. Because when you DPS the shield, they actually just fly out of the boss and you get a bunch of them. One of these is 10% damage increase. And because I realized that, that is all of a sudden 1 minute and 28 seconds faster. Of course, I could get that even faster when I get pretty good at this. But uh, yeah, I was actually just, just camping behind these pillars the whole time and waiting for it to go down. That is why it took so long in the last phase. Actually getting back to back kills now. Of course, the kill times are not good. But uh, yeah, actually not dying anymore, but I actually have no food left at all. That was all food used in a kill. But uh, yeah, definitely improving on the boss. I think I died like three times again before I actually got this kill, but I think it was because I wanted to just try to do it faster this time. But I think the key to getting my kills consistently is just take my time and do the mechanics right and I'll get the kill even if it will be a minute or two slower. It matters so much how well you actually manage the shadow pools in the third phase because this time it only had 12% in the last phase and that is really good. And I usually kill the boss around 30 or 40% which is not very good at all and I get some an inert adrenaline crystals. But um, I actually even with a vampirism aura which is not good for DPS of course managed to get a personal best of 745 which is 27 seconds better. And that is of course because I had so low anima or shadow energy on the boss in for the last phase and the third phase. So getting good at that is pretty hard I think, but if you get good at it, it is going to speed up your kills by a lot. But that is now my 5th KC on Raksha, you can see I got an achievement for it and I think that should be enough Raksha for this video. And probably for the future videos I will have some Raksha in all of them. Kinda of funny how I started this video wanting to do a lot of skilling and uh, Raksha just took a long time and it didn't really turn out that way, but I actually didn't know about this, there is actually a sawmill right here in Priftinus. Probably common knowledge, but I just assumed that the only one that existed was in the lumberyard in Varrock or outside of Varrock. Of course doing this is a lot faster and shouldn't be that bad if I have the money and all the logs to make all the planks for 99 construction. But also, I wanna check how many logs my plank maker in the invention guild has turned through 3-4 days I think. Probably not a lot because it is very slow, but I also want to check my miscellanea just uh, for like four days as well since I started this video basically. Four days of plank maker has made 689 planks. I mean it is free so that is very nice, it doesn't cost money. This would be like 1 mil in cash. So it's very nice to just passively get this done and I'm just going to keep them in there. But uh, let's go and check the miscellanea as well. Actually went here to take out some money, that's why it says uh, one day and three hours ago, but it's actually like three days more accurately. I was uh, paying a lot for death costs before I realized I could just use the ring of death. But uh, let's see how many logs, 441. So obviously not very good, like more than like maybe 135, 140 per day. Of course some herbs as well, but um, yeah, I'll just let it build up. If you're an Iron Man like me and you're not sure how to get food for your dragons in your player-owned farm, I think this is probably one of the best ways to do it. Just go to uh, this area right here, I don't even know what it's called, but it's uh, below the Ascension Dungeon. And you can just buy packs of meat and you can just use this for the dragon. 
Let's see, 150 for that, or even more than that, like 300, 100 raw rabbit, and 300 raw bird meat. They eat all of this type of meat, and it's pretty cheap as well, and you can buy big packs of it of 50 each, and you just come back here every day pretty much. And speaking about that, this is how my dragons are doing. These actually just turned elder, so we get 45,000 experience for all of these. Let's do that, and that is by the way a level I think, yeah 93, and I'm going to remove this egg and put it into another pen, 93 farming, very nice, and also here are some dragons that I've bred in the breeding pen of course, and I can gather some produce from them as well, the small one also. And let's put this one in, I think this is going to be full now, oh it is already full. So I think I have another large pen over here that has yaks in it or like bowls so I'll just remove all of them and I can put in the dragon and I have meat now that I can put in there to uh, feed them. So when doing Raksha I changed my runecrafting relics to PVM relics and I don't have enough chrono to change back so I can't actually uh, train efficiently through the abyss right now so I'm just going to AFK some rune span for mostly the rune ethereal fragments. I think I need to make three more pieces overall so like 10,000 more fragments and then I have the combined full set and I will be able to bring more rune essence or pure essence in the outfit which is going to speed up the experience by quite a bit and also at 90 I can get the uh, I think it's called massive pouch that has even more runes you can bring inside of it so at 90 I'm going to get quite a bit more experience an hour but for now I'm going to end the video here I hope you guys did enjoy it and I'm very happy about those Raksha progress and uh, if you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.